reduced until month two, so we don't need to go into it too much right now. But that is a new component of it, and I think it's a fun component of it because who doesn't like to get told that they can eat cookies or bagels or crackers or pretzels or cupcakes or other things like that. So, um, so that is coming as well. And in addition to it, you guys, um, with the nutrition, since we're sort of on that topic, Bobby and I, Bobby, my brother, the co-host of Fixate, we just filmed two weeks ago, we filmed a bunch of new Fixate recipes and about half of what we filmed were 80 day obsession specific recipes. And when 80 day obsession launches, there will be a new subtitle in Fixate that says, 80 day obsession recipes. So in addition to the new ones that we just filmed, we're also going through all of the pre-existing recipes and like earmarking them like this, this fits great for meal one, or this is great, you know, for this meal over here. Um, so, so know that and that you have that option because it's really important. You don't want to just eat chicken and rice and broccoli for 80 days, you'll be really, really bored. So get used to meal prepping, get used to using Fixate, get used to using your containers, and, um, and it'll keep it a lot more interesting throughout the 80 days. Okay, what about fasting while on the nutrition plan? Cameo is asking. Um, are you, is this for a holiday? Is there, is there a fasting holiday that's coming up? Or are, Cameo, are you asking in regards to something like intermittent fasting? You can either unmute yourself or you can type your I've just in. been enjoying intermittent fasting. I've been doing it, I don't know, for the past like four weeks and I feel so much more energy with it. And I also am like incorporating it in a, in a spiritual sense. And so I wondered how that fit into this. Here's the thing. Here's what I'm going to say. Um, let me give a little bit more detail on intermittent fasting. You guys, there's, there's hundreds of nutritional theories out there. And what works for one person doesn't always work for somebody else. Um, Fasting is not a part of 80 day obsession for a reason. The workouts are very intense and you are, it's designed to fuel your body throughout the day so that you don't hit lows and that sort of thing. That's not saying that you can't do it. Again, I'm not here to tell anybody like if something's working for you, then you can figure out how to incorporate that in. But here's what I say about intermittent fasting. And again, this is not to shun it on anybody, but, um, Intermittent fasting is definitely one of the hardest nutritional theories that are out there. Meaning, um, you, I know when people say, well, well, we used to do it back in like, you know, the, the stone age, if you will, when we had to hunt and gather and blah, blah, blah. And that's true. But we don't hunt and gather anymore. And our bodies aren't designed like that anymore. And, and in the hunting and gathering days, we also didn't do anything else. It was like you built a hut and you stayed safe and, and then they chased down an animal and kill it. And then like, that was sort of the, the day, right? There was no like going to work for eight hours and, and like the kids and the friends and the social life and the blah, 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 blah. So our bodies aren't the same and, and they do need different things. Okay. They do need a different amount of energy now because we're expending a different amount of energy now. Um, and again, like I said, there's always a good and there's always like a plus and a negative to everything. So I'm not necessarily knocking it. I'm just sort of explaining why it would be really hard for most people. Um, we also, you know, prehistoric days, there was no grocery store, there was no gas station, there was no going out to restaurants and blah, 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 blah. Now there's temptation around you 24 seven. So let's say you eat all your containers in that designated, some people do it in six hours, some people do it in eight or nine hours, and then you go the rest of the day and night without eating. So let's say you do that in the, that amount of time. And then four, five, six hours later, you're starving and you're starving and you're starving. So one of two things is going to happen. You're going to either stick with your intermittent fasting and you're going to just be starving. And that does a whole different thing to your body. Um, slows your metabolism down. It slows all your systems down because it's not getting what it needs. So it goes into conservation mode. Um, or you're going to end up giving in and eating something because you're so hungry and the option to eat is in front of you because we have refrigerators and pantries and all of that. In which case then you've overeaten because you already ate your containers in that amount of time. 
And there's also the third option, which is that intermittent fasting works great for you and you're not the person who ends up hungry and you don't overeat and you feel great. And that is another option. It's just not going to be that way for most people. Most people will be hungry. Most people will end up eating over their containers later. The one other thing with intermittent fasting that I say is that you have to be really careful because when you look at the container system for Portion Fix, any of, any of my programs, right? It's more food than you expect it to be usually, right? Like most people are like, oh, it didn't look like it was gonna be a lot, but it actually is a lot because it's very nutrient dense. You get to eat a lot of fruit, you get to eat a lot of vegetables and protein because you're eating healthy food, it's lowering calories, which means you get more of it. Well, your stomach is only so big. Your stomach should technically be the size of your fist, okay? So at any given meal, you don't really wanna be putting more food in there than, than that amount. We already do that as it is because we burn more than that, okay? But the more you put in, the more you stretch your stomach out, which means the more you have to put in next time to actually feel satiated because your stomach has to fill up for you to get that, that sense of, okay, I'm full, I'm done. So by putting the amount of food that we're eating in 80 day obsession into a constricted time period, sort of like that six or eight hours, there's, there's five meals a day in 80 day obsession. So if you're eating all your food in a six hour period, you basically have to eat a meal an hour. You very well could end up feeling pretty gross and overly full and stretching out your stomach. Um, and then if eventually you come off intermittent fasting at some point in life, be it, you know, six months, a year, or six years from now, you will in a way have reprogrammed your body to be used to this and going this significantly long period of time without food, which means more than likely you will have in some way slowed your metabolism down. Like your body will be like, oh, I get this amount of food over here, and then I have to go for this longer stretch without it. So there's, like I said, that's not for everybody though. And different nutritional theories do work for people and, and, and intermittent fasting definitely works for people. And there are, there was at least one or two coaches who went through the program doing it. I, I was specific with them and I asked them not to talk about it too much um, publicly on social media, just because I was like, I don't want to confuse people. And I do want people when they take on 80 day obsession to take on the nutrition component, the way it's designed. If it, you know, I don't want them to throw different things at it that they've never tried before. You've been doing intermittent fasting for a while. It's, if it's working for you, then you figure out how it works within the, the, the ecosystem of 80 day obsession. And, the, and that's totally fine. I just, I can't guarantee what the results will be because it wasn't designed to be done that way. But if you feel good on it and you, and you make it work for you, then, then that's totally, that's like I said, there's no, there's no wrong to that. But I, I like to give people a little bit more in-depth explanation as to sort of why it's not that or why I'd be careful to go there with it um, if they've never tried it before. Cool? Okay. With the time nutrition, do we need to work out at a specific time each day? No. You work out at whatever time works for you. And what we've done in this particular uh, program and guidebook, you guys, we've given sample days if you work out early in the morning, if you work out midday, or if you work out later in the evening, like when you get home from work. So you will follow your nutrition based on whenever you're putting your workout in your day. And that doesn't mean you have to do it at the same time every day. Maybe two or three days a week you're gonna work out at 6 a.m. and then maybe one day you've got a really packed day and you don't get to work out till 6 p.m. That's fine. You just, on the days where you're working out at 6 a.m., you follow the nutrition plan the way it's written for that morning, for working out in the morning. And when you're working out at night, you follow it for how it's written if you work out at night. And the only difference is we have something in the program, and again, you guys will sort of see this, it's a little abstract when, when you don't have the program in front of you. Um, the only reason that matters is we have something called the workout block. And that workout block is basically your pre-workout meal, your supplements, and your post-workout meal. That block, and then your, your actual workout. That block always stays together, no matter where in the day your workout goes. Your pre-meal goes this many hours before your workout, your supplements come here, here, and here, and your post-workout comes at this point 
within a certain amount of time after your workout. So wherever you put your workout, that nutrition moves with it. And it's really easy to understand. It's literally like laid out for you in a really pretty easy to follow chart that even kids can follow. So, um, so don't stress about that. You can move your workout to wherever you want and the nutrition just follows along. It's very easy to follow. Um, now that I'm done, do I have a maintenance plan? What are all of you doing now that you're finished? So I'm actually on another round of 80 day obsession. Um, and I'm following it the exact same way I did when I was filming it. Um, I wasn't in a weight loss. I, I, I'm not trying to lose any weight. So I don't, I follow maintenance nutrition for myself, no matter what program I'm doing. And you will see that, that there's a formula for weight loss and there's a formula for maintenance in the program. So depending on what your goals are, you'll follow that. Um, I know there's several coaches, probably about half have started the program again that were in the test group because they have access to the link. So there's about half of them going through it again. And then some people are taking a little bit of a break and following, I, I have a mashup calendar on my website right now that I'm taking my big group through, my Prepare to Be Obsessed group. And it's a mashup of 21 Day Fix, Fix Extreme and Chisel. And a lot of people are following that right now just as like a little break because what they want to do is jump back in with their challengers um, in January when it starts. So there, there's a mix of everything sort of happening. And then some people are like, oh, I'm going to go on and go back to like Sean or Tony or whatever. And they're going to circle back again when the program launches. So everybody's sort of doing their own thing. And that's, that, that would be life anyways. When you finish the program, you absolutely can start it right over. And, and I think it's probably going to be one of the most fun programs to start over from the beginning because we did film it 80 days straight. You never see the same workout twice. Like what we do on day one, you only see day one, one time. You only hear those cues that day. You only hear whatever we're joking about that day. You only see the cast on day one, one time. So 80 days go by. If you circle back to the beginning, by the time you watch day one again, you're sort of like, oh yeah, I forgot all about blah, blah, blah. Or, oh my gosh, I didn't even hear that little piece of motivation or, oh wow, it's so interesting to look at it, look at day one from a different point of view now that you've gone through the whole program. So I do think a lot of people will probably circle through this one multiple times because there's so much to get out of it um, because every single day is different. Let's see, what else do we have? Will there be a vegan plan? Yes, there is a full vegan plan for 80 Day Obsession launching at the exact same time as all the other nutrition components. So even though we have a vegan plan for 21 Day Fix, it didn't come out until almost two years after the launch of 21 Day Fix. This time we've got the full vegan plan. It's good to go. Um, one of the gentlemen that was in the cast is vegan, and so he followed the vegan plan the whole way through, had amazing results. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely included. I'm about to finish the ultimate reset this week. What would, uh, what program would you suggest to prep for 80 days? Okay. So if you're finishing ultimate reset, then more than likely you haven't really worked out because to the best of my knowledge, you're not really supposed to do much of anything other than maybe yoga if you're doing ultimate reset. So I would ease back in because you haven't done anything in three weeks, like really like weightlifting. I would go back to 21 day fix for three weeks and then that will basically take you up to the launch of a little obsessed and then when a little obsessed launches i'm taking everybody through a little obsessed for four weeks um, up into the launch of 80 day obsession because that is a uh, a little obsessed was designed yes to help people get prepared for 80 day obsession but it also is a standalone program you can do a little obsessed it's five workouts, complete workouts, head to toe. You can do that for four weeks. That's a full cycle and, and it's its own program. So you absolutely can do that as well. So I would do like 21 day fix and then I would go into a little obsessed. That way you're getting used to using the resistance loops. You're getting used to using the sliders. You're using the weights. They're being incorporated back in. Uh, you get a feel for how the different days in 80 day obsession go. Like what does cardio core look like? What does total body core look like? What does... Um, triple A look like, all that sort of thing. And then that way you'll be fairly ready. It's still going to be more intense. 80 day obsession is definitely more intense than 21 day fix or a little obsessed, but that, that should be a really good base 
to take you into the program. What else do we have? Hold on. I am currently finishing up Body Beast. Will be done at the end of December. Do you think I will be well prepared or should I get more cardio in? Vanessa, I would just get more cardio in. You'll, you'll be fine in terms of all of the weight training, but I would definitely um, try to get in some, some cardio. Maybe even once you finish Body Beast, just do a week or two of a little obsessed because there's a lot of cardio built into that. Um, it, even the leg day feels like cardio because I keep you moving so fast through it. So I would just say maybe try to get a little bit of cardio in each day just so that your cardiovascular system is a little more prepared for what it's gonna get hit with in 80 day obsession. Um, somebody said I'm doing it over and it's like doing a brand new program, fun to see progress. Yes, that is very true. That's what Bianca says. She's saying she's doing it over and it's like doing it a whole new program again. <sighs> Emily says not 80 day obsession related, but how do I get my son to eat healthy? Um, you guys, that the, he's still, you know, he's eight going on nine and I definitely get that it's hard to get kids to eat healthy. There's a couple of things. Well, obviously the younger you start them, the easier it is. So Dom's definitely from day one been given really healthy foods all the time. That doesn't mean I don't let him eat healthy. But I am also very clear on who the parent is and who the kid is, and I'm the parent. And so I determine what he's going to eat right now, not him. That's not to say I'm like crazy strict about it, but you know, and like last night I let him eat pizza, but he had to eat salad with it. And he doesn't necessarily eat like, all the vegetables in the world, but he has a handful of veggies that he likes that he'll eat. So he has to rotate through those. Um, he likes fruit. So he has, you know, he eats that. I don't keep a lot of junk food in the house really. And even the, the junk food that I keep in the house is definitely healthier versions of what junk food would be. So, uh, you know, like the chips that I buy them are a brand called Jackson's on Jackson honest. And they're like, they're baked and they're done in coconut oil that kind of thing. So, but it, it's a give and take. Um, at the same time, you know, Dom goes to a private school and they're able to buy lunch at the private school. And even though I pack his lunch almost every day of the week, that like maybe once a week I let him buy. Apparently, if a kid goes into the lunchroom and goes up to buy, even if he doesn't have money on his account, they don't deny the child food because they're, they're like, well, what if you forgot to pack his lunch or something? So even today, my assistant comes in and she's like, hey, you know, I got the, the printout today of what Dom's bought this month, and um, he's buying a lot more than, than you're letting him. So we just had to sit down and have a conversation, because here's my kid going in, like I pack him a super healthy lunch, and then he's going in and like buying lunch, or buying chips, or buying a bunch of orange juice. And I was like, all right, let's sit down and talk about it. And just, you know, it's very open with him. Like I wasn't like mad at him or anything, but I explained to him why buying orange juice every single day of the week is not a good idea. It's a ton of sugar and like that sort of thing. And you can have it every once in a while. So I think just inviting kids into the kitchen, letting them cook with you, taking them grocery shopping, although it's a pain in the butt, because then they can pick out, like, I'm willing to try this, I'm willing to try that, and they're, they feel like a big kid. Like, when they get to pick it out, they feel like they, they're in charge. So if you give them a little bit of um, responsibility for themselves in that manner, I do think they're more likely to eat healthy. All right, let's see what else we got. Are there any physical materials other than the band sliders and weights we should get before 80 day obsession starts? No, there will be um, printed guidebooks that you can get and um, like the printed quick start guide. I was just in a meeting with, with if you guys know who Michael Neiman is, Michael Neiman is, he's sort of the head of the coach network. Um, so they were sort of running down all the configuration packages. And what I can also tell you guys, you'll find out at Super Saturday, but there's something really fun coming for the coaches um, with 80 Day Obsession. Um, I'm, I'm not allowed to say any more than that right now. But just know that there's going to be like a cool other thing that you can do with this. Um, 
that, that sort of ties into the configuration packages and, and depending on like if you're buying one of those or not. But, but no, you need the loops, the sliders, and, and light, medium, and heavy resistance bands. That's, that's all the tangible material that you need. Okay, regarding the performance line, are you using them in addition to the other containers, especially specifically the recharge and recover? We do use the performance line. It is programmed into the nutrition component of 80 Day Obsession. Doesn't mean you have to. It's just in there, it's, it's prescribed in there so that you know where to put it and how to use it if you do want to use it. Um, we all used the performance line. I love the performance line. The, the benefit is in the title, performance. It's there to enhance your performance. So, like I said, if you don't use it, does that mean you won't get good results? Absolutely not. But if you do use it, will you maybe have a little bit of an edge? Yeah. You know, if you wake up and you're tired and you take Energize, great. You got a nice little boost to get you through your workouts. When you lift really heavy, and you finish with your workout, if you drink chocolate recover and start the recovery process on your muscles immediately, does that help? Yes, it does. Um, if you are somebody who sweats profusely and you drink hydrate and it rehydrates your body, does that help you? For sure. Most people walk around mildly dehydrated every day, all day, and they don't even realize it because we just don't drink enough water. So drinking hydrate, Great, super good for you. Um, if you're incredibly sore, like you're going to be from these workouts and you drink vanilla recharge at night and it helps you with the lactic acid and your soreness a little bit so that when you wake up the next day to do your workout, you can actually move. Yeah, that's, that's a benefit. That's going to help your performance. So it's there and it's built in if you want to use it. What else we have? Let's see. What's your recommendation for new moms, same as cleanses, ease into it with 21 day fix, or if you were a 21 day fix, extreme insanity kind of person, can you go right into it? Um, so if you're a new mom and you, I wouldn't, I, I guess it depends on what you've done during the pregnancy. Obviously you need to make sure you're cleared by your doctor to go back to exercising. I don't ever recommend going back to, um, the really hardcore stuff immediately. I always say ease back in with something like a 21 day fix or a PIO or even like a size or country heat just because a lot happens to our bodies when we're pregnant. Uh, more, more than we're willing to acknowledge sometimes. Like you don't realize there's a specific hormone that releases in your body called relaxin that allows your joints to spread. So your hips can spread so you can give birth to your baby. It's not confined to just your hips. Every joint in your body does it. So your joints are looser, which means your stability is not as great. Your stomach muscles have been stretched out. There was a baby that grew in there. Like your stomach muscles just aren't as strong as they were beforehand. So if you're not careful, that's when you can get a hernia, especially if you just pushed the baby out and you strained yourself already anyways. Um, cardiovascular wise, you're not gonna be quite there yet. You do still have all these other hormones in your body that you know, you're tired, you're, you're, you're trying to produce milk, you're trying to feed the baby, like all these things are going on. So adding an intense, intense workout like extreme or insanity with it, you know, if you had the baby six weeks ago or eight weeks ago, usually not the best way to jump back into it. I would ease back in with like a 21 day fix or something and then go into your more intense ones. Uh, let's see. Let's see, it says, I am finding this is hitting my female market, but getting the husband's men on board has been tougher with the slides and bands uh, versus heavy weights. Any tips? Yeah, you guys, here's the thing. Look to the male coaches that were in the test group. They had phenomenal results, okay? And I know, first of all, it's hard to get a guy to follow me no matter what because I'm tiny little me, and they're like, what's that girl going to do? Okay, right up until they try one of my workouts and then they can't move. Um, but, and I get it. They look at the resistance loops and they think like, eh, that's not for me. I just want to push heavy weight. The problem with only pushing heavy weight is that our bodies, I'll give you a little background on 80 day obsession. You know, Carl came to me and was like, I want an ass and abs program. Sorry about the language, but that's exactly what he said to me. And I was like, all right, but it still has to be functional. Like that's me. I, I train for functional training, meaning that your body functions and moves the way the mechanics of your body are designed to do. Okay. So sometimes when you push a lot of heavy weight, like Sagi, 
that, yeah, you got a lot of big muscle on you, but you don't have the flexibility that you're supposed to have. Or um, you're, you're strong in some areas, but weak in others just because of the way you built that muscle. And that is not ideal, especially as you age. But the older we get, like that much pressure on your joints and that sort of thing, that's not going to feel good. But also, the, way, the reason the loops and the sliders are in there, they're in there for a very specific reason. Um, we sit on our butts all day long, which means our butt muscles, our glutes, don't fire and activate the way that they're supposed to. And our glutes are super important to how we move throughout our day. They're what propel us forward to walk, what propel us forward to run. They assist when we sit down. They assist when we stand up. They assist when we climb a stair, all this stuff. But ours aren't working the way they're supposed to because all we do is sit anymore. So they're sort of what we call turned off. Um, same thing with your core. We sit all day long and most of us have, have the worst posture in the world. So our core isn't working the way it's supposed to, which leads to back problems and rounded shoulders, which leads to neck issues and a distended stomach because the way you're sitting is pushing your stomach out instead of holding it in. By using the resistance loops, it helps us activate the butt muscles to get them firing again. Like, I can't tell you the, the guys that were just like, ah, these loops, blah, blah, blah. And then the second they used them, they were like, this is the hardest thing ever. Richardson, the very large black man full of muscles in A Little Obsessed, who's also an 80 day obsession, from day one to day 80, complained about how hard the loops were every time we used them on our legs. Every time he was like, oh my God, it hurts so bad because all he does is lift heavy weights. And those muscles weren't strong for him the way they needed to be. So for him, it was a really big eye opener of like, oh, here I am squatting like 200 pounds. My quads are strong, but my butt isn't. And that's a problem. So you can talk to the guys about the science behind it. You can also just tell them to look at people like Danny Delgado who had amazing results. Um, who else were some of my other guys right now that were in there? Um, Brad Bizjack had amazing results with the program. Um, oh, um, blah, 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 blah. oh, my God, why is my brain working right now? Bianca said Miguel Carrasco. Miguel had great results. I'm, oh my God, this is ridiculous. One of the guys that I'm like such good friends with, I don't know i have the worst headache right now this is why my brain's not firing what is chelsea chelsea pearson's husband's name rob pearson uh, rob oh my god thank you <sighs> guys i'm going senile over here rob pearson amazing results look at him and like he just embraced it and that's what they have to do is they just have to embrace the challenge because let me tell you the loops they're used, but there's plenty of heavy weight pushing throughout this whole program. There are plenty of moves that are so challenging that like the guys were having a great time. They didn't want to in the beginning. They really wanted to like sort of poo poo all over it right up until they got into it and they were like, oh crap, I kind of love it. So um, just challenge them to try one and maybe don't pick butt day for them to try. Like, get them to do, like, total body core or get them to do AAA first. Like, just be like, honey, come try this one. Maybe if you like this one, you'll try another one. And, like, get them to just try some of the workouts because once they do, I guarantee they're going to love it. Um, unfortunately, no, there is not a vegan option for the performance line yet. Uh, can you clarify diameter, size of resistance loops? I got one set that was 12 and the other set that is nine. They're completely different. Yeah. Okay. So there are nine inch loops and there are 12 inch loops. And based on your size, will determine what size loops you need. So like for me, I use the nine inch loops. Obviously I'm smaller, I'm shorter, I have tinier legs. Um, if you're taller, if like five, seven or taller, you might need the 12 inch loops. And there's no good way for me to define in terms of if I sort of say, if, if you have 30 pounds or more to lose, you probably want the 12 inch loops because when you put them around your thighs, you don't want them to feel like tourniquets around your thighs. Like you need to be able to actually 
move them. So having the 12 inch loops for that is definitely going to be um, beneficial. And I do know with all of the different configurations of packages that Beachbody is selling, you get one set of each. You get a nine inch set and a 12 inch set. Like that's just a given. So um, you'll at least, if you're, if you're a little like on the fence, like, oh, I'm five seven. I don't know which ones I should use. You'll have both options and you can play with both to see which is better. Okay, so not recommended to do during pregnancy. No, you guys, 80 day obsession, it's, pregnancy is the one group of people that 80 day obsession is definitely not for. Um, everybody keeps asking me like, who is it for? It really is for anybody who has the willingness to dedicate to 80 days, to dedicate time to themselves because this is a big part of this is just self care and like giving yourself the time to do the workouts, giving yourself time to do the meal prep, giving your time, yourself time to do self care. Like this really is about you, your journey, celebrating you wherever you're at on that journey. I don't care if you have a hundred pounds to lose or no weight to lose. Anybody can do it if you have the willingness to try and if you have the mindset not to get discouraged at the fact that it's going to be hard. I don't care how in shape you are, you're gonna watch myself and the cast die every day. Every day was hard. Every day we're like, why is it so hard? Um, it's supposed to be hard. The hard is what makes it great. The hard is what changes you. The hard is what challenges you and pushes you outside of your comfort zone. If it was easy, we would all do it. Um, but if it was easy, it wouldn't be effective. So again, whether you have 100 pounds to lose or you're already at your goal weight, it should still challenge you because you should be challenging yourself. You should be pushing to your max, whatever that is. Even if it's less than what myself and the cast are doing, that's okay. Like we're there as a guide. Maybe you're using less weight. Maybe you're not using weight at all. Maybe you're modifying the modifier. That's all okay as long as you're okay with that. As long as you don't look at it negatively upon yourself. Like I'm weak, I'm not good enough, I'm not strong enough, I can't do it. You have to get rid of all of those limiting beliefs and just say, I'm all in for 80 days to do as much as I can do with this program and see where it takes me. But pregnancy is the one group of people that that's not okay for because your circumstances are different. You are growing a baby. Your body is going through massive amounts of changes. Um, 80 day obsession brings your heart rate up and it keeps it there for a really long time. Not always great during pregnancy. We're on our back for a lot of different moves. You can't go on your back after 14 weeks of pregnancy. At least you're not supposed to. A um, lot of stabilization work, which the further into pregnancy you get, the more unstable your joints become. So even that is just not great. Um, the nutrition would be hard to follow if you're in the first trimester and you're experiencing morning sickness. So there's just a bunch of reasons. Like this really is an intermediate to an advanced program. And I don't recommend that for pregnancy. Stick with something like 21 Day Fix or Babies on Bod or my different prenatal workouts. And just know that this one's going to be waiting for you. After you give birth, after you've been cleared from your doctor, once you've sort of settled into your routine with the baby, and then you can put time aside for you. Because remember, that's a big part of what this is. This is one of the first, actually this is the first time ever, that I'm really teaching you guys about making it about you. You know, we do everything for work, we do everything for our significant others, we do it for our kids, for our family, for our friends, and we put ourselves last. This program is about putting you first and knowing that that's not selfish, that that is perfectly acceptable to take some time to take care of you. But you have to make that time in your schedule in order to have success with the program. Let's see. I'm wondering if I get pregnant by January, if I can continue workouts and if I can drink, recharge, recover performance life. Uh, Camilla, if you're pregnant by January, you can definitely continue working out as long as the doctor says you can. I obviously always defer to the doctor on that one. Um, again, I would just, I would stick with something less intense. And in terms of the performance line, 
I, I, I would double check with your doctor. I don't think there's anything in it that's bad or harmful, but I would just double check with your doctor to make sure that they're not like, it, uh, recover obviously and recharge. Definitely don't mess with energize. Not not to be had when you're pregnant. Um, Bianca just gave me a bunch of guys' names. Thank you, since my brain wasn't firing. Miguel uh, was on there. James Fitzpatrick, Rob Harrison, Danny Delgado. Those are some of the guys. So if you want to see their results, um, and I'll try to do a post in the next couple of days with with the guys' results, so that maybe you guys can grab that if you want it and push it over to the men. Uh, what size weights do you recommend for light, medium, and heavy? That is so, so different for every single person because what is light for one might be heavy for somebody else. So you need to know what your light, medium, and heavy are. And you're going to need to be prepared that you'll probably need to bump up in weights throughout the program. So holidays are coming up. Maybe you want to ask for a couple different sets or you want to set a little bit of money aside each month to just be like, oh, I'm going to buy one, one, one more set. So myself and the cast used everything. I used everything from a five pound dumbbell to a 50 pound dumbbell. My average, now the 50 pound dumbbell, I was holding one and I was doing sumo squats with it. Um, and that was towards like month two and three. On average, I think I was using 10s, 12s, 15, 17 and a half, 20s, and 25s. On average, throughout the whole program. So, like my 10s and my 12s were more of my upper body stuff, using the 15s sometimes for upper body. And then my 15s, 17 and a half, 20s, and 25s were more of my lower body stuff. And then there was times where I would grab a 35, like I'd grab one or I'd grab a 45 or a 50 because my legs are super strong. I've been working my legs for a really long time. Um, so I, I have strong legs. I have to lift heavy on it. But again, you can hold two 15s, which is equal to a 30. You can hold two 20s, which is equal to four. You know, like there's ways of doing, maybe you've got um, a set of 10s and you've got a set of eights. Put a 10 and an eight in one hand. It's a little funky to hold. You got to cross them over each other. But now you've got 18. Okay, so now you've got 18 in each hand. That's another way of doing it. So you can always find a way to make it a little harder on yourself without having to invest a ton of money. But if you are the person that's going to work out at home that isn't getting a gym membership because you've got beach body on demand, then invest a little money over time to building up your equipment so that as you go through these programs, you have what you need to keep making progress. Let's see what else we have. Uh, Okay, let's see. Aside from the pre and post workout meals, can the containers be used randomly in a grazing fashion throughout the day? Um, it's not designed that way, Melanie. It's, it's very specific, like I said, to keep your macros balanced. It is very timed nutrition. So if you were going to do it that way and graze throughout the day, again, I'm not saying you can't, but it wouldn't be following the 80, like, I'm very specific to say that if you don't follow it the way I wrote it, then you're not really doing 80 day obsession. That's, that's the thing. And I say that so that let's say you follow the grazing thing and for whatever reason, maybe you miss a container here or there, or you wait too long, maybe you wait four hours instead of eating two to three, like, and then all of a sudden you're going, Oh, my results aren't that great. You didn't follow the nutrition that I designed to go with it. So I'm just very careful because a lot of people like to like to go, it didn't work, it didn't work. And then I start asking them why, and then they didn't really follow it the way I designed it. And I'm not, I'm not saying anything about results outside of how I designed it. I have no idea what that could be because I didn't test that. I tested timed nutrition, these containers at this time, these containers at this time, spaced out like this. And I and myself, myself and the Beachbody team have proven that this got phenomenal results while people felt energized, while they felt really good, while they didn't feel deprived and all of that sort of thing. So I'm not saying it couldn't work. I'm just saying I've never tested it that way. So I wouldn't do it that way if it was my first time taking on the program. I would take on the program as it was designed to see how that works for me. Uh, let's see. If you have a uh, wait, 
Okay, so so basically, somebody saying if you if you've got a butt if you've got butt muscles that really aren't um, firing, how long it, how how um, how long do you have to do the exercises to wake those muscles up? You guys, you're gonna feel them from day one. The second we start doing it, the the second you get down, especially um, phase one booty day where you lay on your back and, and the first exercise is glute bridges. Glute bridges are the best move ever to activate your butt muscles. It just is. You lay down, you squeeze up through your heels, you squeeze your butt, and those muscles have no choice but to engage. It might feel hard, you might have a hard time getting your hips all the way up into full extension, but from day one, you're gonna start feeling it. So. Um, there's there's more of a difference between how long till they start firing compared to how long until it gets easier and and not as painful uh, or as sore once you're doing it and that that's the difference I feel like maybe after the first two or three weeks the soreness starts to let up a little bit it's not quite as intense but then you go into phase two and then the soreness comes back fresh as can be because you get a whole new set of workouts so um, but yeah your your butt muscles will be firing, that's the whole point, from day one. That doesn't mean you're gonna have a perky butt after day one, it just means they're gonna be firing from day one so that by the end, hopefully you do have a nice, strong backside. Yes, self-care is explained in the program materials, but self-care is anything and everything that is just devoting a little bit of time to you. It can be getting a massage, it can be taking an Epsom salt bath, it can be doing a daily meditation that helps you relax. It could be getting a manicure and a pedicure. It could be foam rolling or stretching. Um, it, it could be taking a nap in the middle of the day if you're not used to it. Or it could be letting yourself go to sleep an hour earlier or sleep in an hour later. Like self-care really is whatever you need to do to feel like you're giving a little extra love to yourself. When you're sore and tired from these workouts, things like soaking in a bath, foam rolling, stretching, getting a massage of some sort, those are going to be the big ones that feel really good just because you're sore. And that's, that's going to be what you want to take care of. So, um, but like I said, it could be anything and everything that makes you feel a little more pampered, a little more well-rested, a little bit more relaxed. That's what self-care is. Okay, uh, let's see, so you talked about the naming on Melanie's call, and I think it's important because the name obsessed is not always good, and I love Carl's response. Oh, okay, so, so Jennifer's asking why the name obsession, or 80-day obsession, and I'll be honest, just like I was on Melanie's call, when, um, when Carl told me what the name of the program was going to be, I freaked out a little bit. I was like, I don't like it. Like you say obsessed and it has a really negative connotation and like people are going to think it's like obsessed counting calories or obsessed about the number on the scale and it couldn't be further from that. And, uh, and he was like, okay, relax, calm down. I know that. And you know that. And I was like, well, yeah, he's like, so we just have to communicate that that's not what it is, that this is about being obsessed about you being obsessed about your health, about being the best version of you possible. And that's all it is, you guys. When you say, when you hear that name, obsession, 80-day obsession, or being obsessed, it is not in any kind of negative way. It has nothing to do with the number on the scale or, or the inches lost or counting calories. It really is, in order to achieve any goal, you have to have a certain level of obsession. If you wanna be an, an attorney, you go to law school, you have to have a certain level of obsession with becoming an attorney so that you can study, right? It's hard, like law school wouldn't be easy. You need to be a little bit obsessed with it to study those materials and take those tests and prepare yourself for that sort of thing. If you wanted to be a pro football player, you would need to be obsessed with your training and practicing to make it as a pro football player. It's the same thing here. You, if you want to have the best results that you can have, I'm not putting a definition on what the best results are, but if you want to have the best results possible, if you want to be the healthiest version that you can be at the end of 80 days, it doesn't even mean you're at the end of your journey. It's just 
the best version that I can be after this 80 days, then you need to be obsessed with the program. You need to be obsessed with following the workouts, with pushing yourself in the workouts, with following the nutrition, the way it's written and not cheating. Like that's what being obsessed is all about with 80 day obsession. It, it could not be more positive um, than the way it was designed. So, so just know that, that if somebody asks you that, take it to the positive and just give them that example and explain it to them like that because that's really what it is about. All right, let's see, we can take like two more questions. Is 80 day obsession good for someone with bad knees, tendonitis? It, it's probably not gonna feel great. There's, there's, there is a modifier that takes the impact out so you, you don't have, and there's not a ton of jumping in the program other than on cardio day, but um, there's definitely a lot of squatting and lunging. So if that is something that bothers your knees, there's no real way around it. You can do certain moves or you could do certain days, like butt day from phase one would probably be, wouldn't be hard on your knees at all because we're on the ground the whole time um, or most of the time. Uh, Things like AAA, arms, abs, and butt wouldn't be that hard because it's a lot of upper body and core. But there is definitely a significant amount of lunging and squatting and things like that. So if you have bad knees, try it and see how you feel. That, that would be the best thing I could say. Yeah. Okay. Do I recommend doing the workouts at a certain time of day? No, I, I really recommend doing it at whatever time works best for you where you can be fully committed to that workout time, where you're not gonna answer the phone, you don't need to go get the kids a snack, you're not responding to text messages, you're not waiting for a package to be delivered, um, all that stuff that can interrupt you. Like, I wouldn't do it then. I would do it when you're just like, okay, work brain is turned off, family brain is turned off, their kids are being handled by whoever, whatever. Like, I'm in this workout for this amount of time, and there's nothing else going on around me. That's gonna be the best time to do your workout because that's when you're gonna be the most focused. Uh, let's see, are there full rest days or active rest days throughout the program? There's full rest days. Every Sunday is a full rest day, and I do recommend you take it. I know a lot of people, well, 80 day obsession I think was the first time I didn't hear people go, I know it's rest day, but I wanna do something. Like I think by the time we got to rest day, everybody was like, <gasps> Thank you, I need a rest day. Um, so, so definitely take your rest days on Sunday when it's there. But there is cardio flow. I don't know that I'd call it active recovery per se, but it's cardio where there's no weights or anything like that. So um, it's not going to sort of tear your muscle fibers on the microscopic level like weight training does. So there is that. So. You're doing cardio, but you're not doing it with any equipment. Same thing with cardio core. It's all your own body weight. And then the ab moves, you use either the sliders or the loops. So those are a little bit of active recovery. When I think active recovery, I think more like yoga and Pilates than cardio. But the cardio days are definitely not going to make you um, sore the same way that the weight training days do. So you do have those built in as well. But Sundays are your full rest days. Okay, any tip for low back pain during this program besides yoga? You guys, if you're using proper form, your back pain should not kick in. I have a really bad back. I have a bulging disc in my lower spine. It's been there since I was like 18 years old. The only time it really gets me is when I get sloppy in my form or I haven't been doing my self-care. Like my muscles got really tight because I didn't stretch enough or I didn't foam roll or I didn't go get a massage or something like that. But if you're holding your core in the way you're supposed to during these exercises, if you're really listening to my cue when I'm saying, don't arch in your lower back, pull your pubic bone towards your nose, tuck your pelvis under, like if you're listening to those things, then your back should be in the right alignment so that you're not hurting it. The other thing to be really careful of is in any time we're in a bent over position, lifting weights, like doing a bent over row, Make sure you're not lifting so heavy that you feel it pulling on your lower back. You might have to go lighter because of it. I always do. It just, that's just is what it is because my, I have that bulging disc. 
I don't really ever go heavier than 20s in a bent over row. And even 20s, I have to be careful. If my back is feeling tight, it's not a 20 pound day. I drop down, I'll go 12s, I'll go 15s, but I'm very aware that I have a injury that I just have to be careful of. So be careful of it. All right, let's see, I'll do one more. Uh, is there a formula for muscle gain? That would basically be your, uh, your maintenance formula. You're gonna gain muscle no matter what doing this program just because of the way it's designed. So you just wouldn't wanna eat and weight loss if you're, if you're trying to sort of maintain your size or put on muscle. Uh, somebody said, I have, I have a hard time with the recovery formula where it makes my stomach bubble and feel bloated. Any tips or recommendations? Regular Shakeology is perfectly fine. Yeah, there's there's probably something in the Recover formula. You might have an issue with um, with whey or casein, which is from dairy. So if it makes you feel that way, don't use it. That That's my biggest recommendation. It's not going to, like I said, it's not going to hinder your results if you're not using it. Um, and any, if anything, if it makes your stomach feel bubbles and bloated, that is actually going to hinder your results more because you're going to look at it like you're gaining weight. Like if you're eating something that bloats you and you don't have ab definition, you're going to be like, oh my God, it's not working. I'm eating too much food. Let me drop down a bracket or something like that. And really it's just, you're, you know, you're drinking a shake that bloats you. So don't drink it. That would be my best recommendation for that. All right, you guys, well, this has been fun and I hope it's answered all your questions. Do you have any closing thoughts that you want to say? Well, I just, I wanted to, to just share with everybody, like my experience in the test group and what, you know, you were so present with us in the test group and you were like giving us all this information on the background. So hopefully this is something that you guys, what was cool is that Autumn was doing the program with us. So at the same time she was going through, you know, like I, I remember, I think it was in the beginning, first week or second week that you like dropped the weights because the forearms gave up, like things like that. It just, it just made everything so real. And I think we we're used to Ottoman 21 day fix and, and extreme. And, and this is just going to be like, literally you took Autumn and put her in your living room. Like that's how I felt. Like I felt like I had a personal trainer walking me through the program, walking me through the workouts, the moves, the correct form. And are the, are the, the videos that you did with the cast, those are going to be released as well, right? Yes, there is. There's something called Weekly Obsession. So where the cast is, they interviewed us almost every single day. So you'll even see that where um, you'll get to know the background cast. You'll hear what they were going through each week. Literally, like there's questions every single day, like how'd you feel about today's workout? Autumn came over and corrected you about this. Um, and even, even what they were going through personally, the cast was very open about their, their life experiences and where they were at. Everything from like, my sister like just finished a horrific divorce as did um, the modifier in the group and she talks about that and sort of where she is and mentally where she is. Um, one of the gentlemen, like his parents were in Miami when the hurricanes hit, like right there on the coast. So even like there's a day or two where he's like completely shut down uh, and he goes through the whole workout and he didn't even tell us until the end of the workout. He's like, I'm really sorry. I was so quiet. My parents are there and I'm worried. And I was like, why didn't you tell me like that that's where you were at? Um, and even myself, my best friend was in Miami, lives in Miami. She was there for the hurricane. There's lots of coaches and, and you'll see, like they asked me about it because I was really messed up that day. Like the day the hurricane hit, my best friend was there. Like she had just moved there three weeks, four weeks earlier. And they're like, why isn't your head in the game? And I'm like, Cause worried about what's happening to all the people I love in Miami. So like you really do see all of that in the weekly obsession. You hear us talk about the food, what, what we're going through with the food. Uh, you'll see, you'll see them showing you what they're making every day. Um, talking about how their body feels, all of that stuff, which I think is a really cool component, um, to have that reality show that goes along with it so that in addition to getting to know everybody during the workouts, you really get to know them um, individually through the show as well. That was really awesome. And I really think that was that that was the game changer. I really, I really like the aspect of it and just how present you were in the group with us and answering questions. So you guys have me, you have the dream team, you have Melanie, that was also in there and you have Alyssa. So 
you know, any other questions that pop up, we'll be able to answer for you guys as we go through. We're, we're in, um, doing a little obsessed, like, prep group now for ADD Obsession. Everybody's really cool. So I, I'll let you go, Autumn. I know you're busy. So just one, oh. you could give, like, one tip for them as they prepare for the launch on December 14th. Is there anything, like, business-wise that they can be doing now to promote this, you know, so that they have, they maximize their, you know, their... Yeah. You guys, I would be talking about it right now. Okay, the momentum is already building. So it's like the snowball is starting to roll down the hill, okay? Like we've been talking about it. People watched us film it. You know, they were very aware of what is going on. The excitement is there. So now is your time to really grab, like just pull them all in. Everybody's curious about what this is. It's never been done in the fitness industry ever. Nobody has filmed for 80 days straight. Nobody's ever put a workout program out that's 80 different workouts that takes you through this progression. There's all this stuff, right? There's so much innovation that is happening and we are it. We are on the forefront. We're like, we're not following somebody else. It's not like, oh, somebody got there before us and we're coming up on there. We are it. So like use that because it is the holiday season. First of all, Call it like it is. Average person gains between seven and 10 pounds from Halloween to New Year's Day. Don't let them go into the new year feeling like crap. So they, and they do need a baseline of fitness for 80 day obsession. So this is the perfect time to get people involved in any other workout program challenge that you're doing. The other big thing is to get people used to meal prepping any way that they want to do it, but you're going to need to have, you're going to need to meal prep for this program. It is what it is. Like if you try every single day to like make the five meals, like unless you're single, no kids, and you're at the top of your career where it's sort of coasting along, you're going to need to be prepped a little bit because life is going to come up and it is time for nutrition. So one of the biggest things I've been recommending to people is I see all of these like free groups that keep going on, like the free crock pot challenge and da da da. And, and they don't really make a whole lot of sense to me for you guys as beach body coaches, because they are not tied into beach body. Like I don't see how the crock pot challenge converts people over to a beach body sale. I don't see how taking somebody through the whole 30 meal plan converts to getting them to beach body because that woman speaks out against shakeology. So the last thing you want to do is take them through a 30 day challenge or somebody and have them have success with it. And, and, and then them go, well, why would I want to buy shakeology from you? I just did this. And she says, shakeology is not good. And you're like, oh, shoot, that was the exact opposite of what I was trying to accomplish. Take them through. Why aren't you hosting a fixate challenge? Where is that? We have over 200 recipes on fixate. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, cocktail. Like, challenge them. And actually challenge them right now at the holidays. People have to prepare. They've got all these holiday parties to go to. Tell them, like, bring a fixate recipe to your next holiday party. At least you know you got one good thing to eat that you're like, okay, I can have this because I made it and I know what's in it. We're challenging to that, to that 30 days of like, hey, do you want to save some money? Like, how, how about all the people that say they can't afford Shakeology and they can't afford Beachbody On Demand? Challenge them to 30 days of fixate and, and cooking at home and ask them how much money they save at the end of it from not grabbing food constantly while they're out. Trust me, it happens. I was so mad at myself today, you guys. I was running errands and I didn't bring food with me. And I was like, I'm starving. And I went to a restaurant here in LA called Tender Greens. It's like, it's healthy food, but it's like, you go up to the counter, you order. I ordered a salad with ahi tuna and a side of butternut squash and a coffee. It was $25. Come on. How stupid is that? Like, and I had all the same stuff at home. Had I just gone home? I could have made all the same things for like six dollars. Okay, like that was such. And it, granted, I was out. I was running errands. I didn't want to go all the way back home. I was in the part of town I needed to be in. But it's things like that where had I meal prepped and taken my food with me today, I would have just ate in my car and continued on with my errands. And instead, I went and spent twenty five stupid dollars on a salad and a side of butternut squash. Like 
talk to them about that. Show them the real benefit. Show them what we really have. You don't need to do all these random groups about, like I said, Whole30 or Crock-Pot this or, hey, I created my own 15-minute workouts. Do you want to come try them for free? Use what we have. That's what you're trying to sell. So if you want to do something where you're demoing moves, how about take them through Clean Week? That's, that's all moves from different programs through at Beachbody. Or you could do your own version of that and be like, I'm going to show you three of my favorite moves from 21 Day Fix today. Or I'm going to show you three of my favorite moves from 21 Day Fix Extreme. And then, you know, do it for a week and be like, are you interested in any of the programs? I just, you know, I was just giving you little tastes each day. But you're using moves from our programs, not hey, I created these own moves of mine. You want to do them for free? Now that you've done those for free, do you want to buy this thing over here and work out with this person? Because it confuses people. They're like, well, wait, I thought you were the expert. I thought you were the one making up the moves, and I thought I could follow you for free. There's so much free content out there already that we're combating like that already makes it harder for you guys as Beachbody coaches to sell. Like that, that's just is what it is, right? Everybody on Instagram is all of a sudden a fitness expert and putting out their own moves and blah, 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 blah. Don't be a part of your own problem. Be a part of your own solution. So by giving more free, 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 I created free, 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 you're, you're making it harder to sell because there's just that much more free content that they don't have to come over and buy from you. So instead, show them the value of what you have to sell. And talk about it. Talk about fixate. Talk about the fact that they need a baseline of fitness for 80 day obsession. Hype it up, you guys. 80 day obsession. It is, it's gonna be the new thing of fitness. I do not doubt for one second that the next program, whoever it is, whatever trainer it is, will film in real time. And I'm not saying that because I know, I don't know that. It's not like I've been told that, but I would be shocked if this is not the direction that Beachbody starts to take it because it's so much more effective. So get them in, like bring them to us before somebody else starts following us, right? Somebody's going to come up on our tail any minute and start doing it too. And then, then we have to compete with them, but we don't have to compete with them if you bring them into us first and they trust us first. Get them to trust us so that they don't want to go anywhere else. That, that's what you can be doing right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's exactly what we needed to hear. Yeah, guys, let's do that. We have a meal prep guide in our team page if you guys need that. I've done that. I've done that out on them. I've done a free, free meal prep. Um, awesome. Free, yeah, clean week, and it works really well. And exactly with that, with the martini recipe from Fix A, it was awesome. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Like, My pleasure, you guys. Have a great night. Happy holidays. And um, I will see you guys all at Super Saturday and January 15th for the big launch. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a great night. You too.